Good day, everyone. This is uh, Patrick Roshan at uh, Learnster.com. And today we're doing a workshop on light painting and especially uh, how to light and work with a model. So this is going to be an exciting day for us because uh, uh, shooting a model and uh, doing a beautiful lighting on uh, a model while light painting is not obvious, as some of you already know. Um, there's a lot of things to, um, there's a lot of tricks we can use to help us to uh, create a beautiful portrait and do something creative. Um, so we're going to go through that um, today. And um, uh, I started light painting 20 years ago. So the first light paintings I did, I used uh, my, my roommates and my friends. So I used models. And that's how I began. So that was a, a natural direction for me. Um, I see more and more light painters using models in, in their shots. And uh, I, I, I hope this workshop will help you bring that, that technique and that uh, art to the next level. Um, before we keep going, I want to talk a bit about uh, resources. Of course, there's my website. If you could show the screen, there's my website you can access on, um, on the web. It's patrickrochon.com. Um, there's a lot of my shootings there. You can get inspired uh, for color palettes, uh, light effects, and um, you know it's a great place to get some ideas from. Um, there's an, an amazing uh, website also called the Light Painting World Alliance. Um, this gathers so many light painters from all over the world. It's a great resource site and a great place to uh, discover who's doing light painting in which country. Then there's the lightpaintingphotography.com. Um, this is an amazing resource site. There's a lot of tutorials, uh, interviews. Uh, there's some tips, tricks, history. There's a blog and a lot of what's happening in the light painting world, uh, in the light painting community, ends up going to the, the, this site, the lightpaintingphotography.com. Um, I'm, I'm opening a shop. I haven't announced it uh, yet. On this shop, you'll find uh, big prints at very uh, affordable prices. You'll find the new light tools, the light blades I showed yesterday, will be available soon on this site. And then you'll have also some tips and tricks, downloadable PDFs for sale at very low cost. So at the light painting shop, this is the, the first light painting shop out there, we'll, we'll gather not only my work, but the work of great other light painters. Um, so I, I'll show you a few, some images uh, I've been doing with light painting over the years um, using uh, models is, uh, for me, is very um, interesting because you, you're working with a different person every time, different energy, different feedback, different problem solving also. Some models are more sensitive uh, to the light. Their eyes are, are, uh, react when I put some lights on. So there's work, works around and today we're going to look at these, uh, these tricks, um, how to work with sensitive eyes and how to keep the person as still and as sharp as possible. Sometimes a blur can be interesting too. Um, Sometimes there's some beautiful blurs in, in, in the, the movement of the model and that will add to the image. So um, I've done a lot of portraits over the years and um, every time it's a challenge, even if I have a lot of experience, every time there's challenges, Every time there's a moment where things are not necessarily working the way I want, and it's all about you keep going, you you still have uh, and you find solutions. You, so, you try something different, you find so, uh, you you problem solve, and um, you you learn to get out of this situation and get to a good place and uh, create something good, something beautiful. Light painting can be applied to fashion, art. Uh, doing portraits uh, of, of people, doing album covers, posters, advertising. It can be uh, used for what, what, whatever you want, um, basically. 
So I, get, getting the light, the base of the light right is important. And um, then finding the right combination of lights, the right colors, so it fits with the model, it fits with the context, it fits with the expression or the clothing. And that is the main, uh, and, and the, the main challenge, the main thing to uh, master is how to make a fit so the light is not on top of the picture, it's really part of the picture as, uh, and it becomes uh, one image. So what the first thing I do is usually I, I look at what is the goal of this picture, why I'm doing this picture, and who's the model, like who's the person, what what are they about, and I try to get as much information as possible, and then I'll 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 think about it, I'll meditate, I'll I'll uh, I'll lie down, and I'll just let my mind go, and then I'll imagine what kind of colors, what kind of effects, and what kind of uh, feeling. I want to create with this. And of course, on the shooting itself, then I improvise a lot, but there's a base. There's something that was uh, thought of before to, to give me a direction. In light painting, there's an infinite possibilities uh, of, of creation and, and making new lights all the time. You can always create something new. So it's good to have a structure, a direction, and to limit yourself so you can go deeper with, with your choices. Um, right after this, uh, yesterday we went through the, the settings on the camera. Today it's very similar, but I'll, I'll, um, I'll go through it just, a, uh, just quickly. So in case you didn't uh, follow yesterday, then we can um, and, uh, enjoy, uh, you can know where we're at today. If you have any questions, of course, during this uh, workshop, go to Facebook, go to the Learnster page on Facebook, and we'll be, uh, we'll be on Facebook uh, the whole time, and we'll be answering your questions if, if, uh, if we can. If we can't answer your question, there's a reason for it. Uh, maybe it's not the right timing for us, and I'll make sure I answer your questions later through uh, email or through the Learnster um, Facebook page. And uh, of course, if there's anything else you wanna ask later, my website is there, there's a contact address. I have a fan page also on Facebook. So there's uh, every communication <laughs> possible for us to, to, to help and share and, uh, and contribute to uh, your, your learnings and your progress. Um, the settings on the camera, basically um, your camera's on tripod, that's important and it's, if you can have a, a cable release, that's gonna help a lot because you need to lock the shutter open during, during a certain amount of time. If you don't, then usually there's a setting for 30 seconds. In 30 seconds, there's enough time for you to do a light painting. It's, it's limited, but at the same time, often we need less than 30 seconds to do a good light painting. So you can always manage with the 30 second setting. The important thing, like I said yesterday, is to keep your, your lens on uh, manual, you, you, um, there's usually a button on the lens or there's a setting in your camera that allows you to choose between manual or automatic focus. Keep it on manual, because in the dark, the lens cannot see what's going on, therefore it's gonna, everything's gonna be out of focus or the camera just won't want to take a picture because it's not gonna see anything. My basic settings are the white balance should be on daylight especially if you're working with LEDs. But then again, if you're working with tungsten lights, then you should readjust it to tungsten. I, I, I put my white balance on daylight, on the sun, and uh, it usually comes out very, uh, very, very well. Um, most of the light I have are either LEDs or white balance light, daylight. So start with that and start with the ISO 100 and then the shutter speed is bulb, or 30 seconds if you cannot access your bulb. And um, there's one thing missing. Uh, bulb, 100, I saw manual focus. I forgot, I'll come back. Um, this, is, this is the basic settings. 
And then you can play, you can readjust. Oh, F11. I always start at F11, my shootings. But I'm, I got used to it. I, sometimes I just look at a light, I go, okay, this one needs F22. Look at another light, okay, this is about 5.6 or F8. So I start with F11, try your tool, test it, and look at the picture and then readjust, open or close the, the aperture depending on your needs. I think, I think F11 is a good, a good place to start. And after a while, you'll just know your tools and you'll know which um, uh, aperture to use. One thing uh, that also influences the exposure is the speed you're moving at. If you're moving slowly, of course, the light's going to be brighter. If you're moving quickly, the light is going to be darker. So that's another way you can readjust. If you felt like, OK, I was moving like this, it's a bit overexposed. But this movement could, this movement could be done quicker. So we just, OK, I'll do it quicker. And then you just uh, bring, automatically bring your light down darker. So that's that. We're going to. Um, I, I've, I've, I took the time to meet the model, talk with the model a bit, get a good feeling going. I was like, okay, um, you know, establishing already a, a light, fun, uh, uh, comfortable uh, connection with her. So she feels like, okay, this is great. She, she's already feeling like the, there's a good feeling for this shooting. Um, I've learned that through the years of, of preparing the model. I didn't explain to her too much what we're doing, just a little bit, but I'm going to explain to her uh, while she's here so you can uh, maybe uh, grab some, some of the experience uh, there. Um, there's a few things. It's important to prepare your model for the experience because it's happening in the dark completely and you're working very close to the model so you're in their zone. So if there's a weird feeling between you two, each time you're going to come close to do some light painting, she might you know, feel like this, and it won't help you to create beautiful light. So that's why right away you create a comfortable zone, uh, uh, a zone where she feels comfortable and she feels uh, safe and secure, and she feels like everything is clear. That helps her, and that helps you, and then you can make more beautiful light because everything is so... Uh, simple and clear. And then the model will offer you more. She'll get more into it. She'll get more excited. And all that energy feeds, uh, gives you a feedback and it, it stimulates. It's like, oh, it brings ideas in. I was like, okay, wow, oh yeah, oh, this is great. Let's do this. And then all of a sudden your mind is just rushing through ideas and colors and you're just, you know, starting to jam and create. And then a lot of surprises happen and then you get some beautiful moments uh, in, in camera then everybody wins at the end, and uh, that's how I feel I can get the best out of a, a shooting. So what we're going to do uh, now is we're going to go uh, prepare, uh, get the model uh, set up. Today I'm going to use a chair, because um, I want the model to sit and stand still. I'm not doing a full feet, I'm just going to do like head and shoulders. So we can see more details of how I light paint, how I light the face and the eyes. Um, we're going to have a few different steps during the day. I'm going to start with um, dealing with sensitive eyes. After the model is ready, I'm going to deal with sensitive eyes. What do we do when the, the models are like too sensitive to the eyes you're using? How to keep the image sharp and some basic lighting. And then after lunch, we'll get more into creative lighting and going a bit wild with, with, with the lights and creating images that are more expressive. And uh, then later, uh, around two, we'll, uh, I'll show you some technique to do more slick, a bit more like airbrush style lighting and to create a really cool base uh, on the face and then add some details around. Um, if, uh, if we have time, I believe we will, then maybe we'll go to the computer and I'll show you the basic retouch I do uh, when I, I do portraits with a model. Sometimes I'll work a bit on the skin if I need to, or I'll do a, some dodge and burn and maybe I'll sharpen a bit. And I've learned a few good tricks, some professional tricks that I'll, I'll share with you. And during the day, we, we might answer questions if it's relevant to what we're doing right now. And if not, at the end of the day, 
around 3.30, 3.45, we're gonna, and it's gonna be a, a good time for you to ask some questions if you can stay with us. And if you can't, just say, I won't be able to make it till the end, can I have this answer right now? And then we'll do our best to answer you. And um, voila, thank you again for joining us on Learnster.com. My name is Patrick Rashawn, and today we're gonna do some great light painting.